Hi, I'm JT Masit. I'm with Caro Ready Mix Concrete Association, or CRMCA. We're here continuing to talk about uh, different procedures that are involved in both the field and lab. Today we're going to talk about a lab procedure that some may be familiar with, but not everybody is familiar with. Uh, if you're a concrete producer, pr uh, provide specifications, or even out in the field managing a project, you should understand this procedure. ASTM C157, length change of hardened mortar and concrete, determines the volume expansion and ultimately shrinkage of mortar and concrete in a controlled environment. It is not recommended to use field specimens and should not be used as a single indicator of in-place concrete shrinkage. Shrinkage, or length change of hardened concrete, is a procedure that is included in the ACI Laboratory Testing Technician Level 2 certification. Uh, we're going to go through the procedure, talk about some of the things that uh, you should pay attention to, as well as how to run the procedure, and some tips and tricks uh, along the way as well. Make sure you have the equipment necessary to cast the mortar or concrete specimens, including WD-40 or similar non-absorbent oil, and the correct sized molds. Here we have 1 inch, 3 inch, and 4 inch molds, where each are appropriate for specific maximum nominal sized aggregates. As I continue to remind everyone, the videos you're watching should be up to date. Procedures change all the time, so if they're within one or two years old, they might not meet current procedures. So speaking of which, check the one on this. We've got water, cement, sand, and aggregate. These materials were predetermined for proportioning. The materials are added to the mixer in the appropriate order. The appropriate additives are then added. When mixing, the ideal slump for the concrete is 3.5 inches, plus or minus a half an inch, using ASTM C143. After the batch is mixed for the appropriate time, the molds can then be prepared. Always cast three specimens per trial batch. Set out the size molds you plan to use and coat with a thin layer of WD-40 or similar non-absorbent oil. Wipe down any excess oil, then insert the gauge studs on either end. It's better to insert the gauge studs after oiling as you want the concrete to release from the molds, but hold on to the studs. A sheen on the mold should be present after preparing the surface. Once the mix is prepared, transport the concrete sample to your specimen casting location. Remix the concrete to make a representative sample. Place concrete in two lifts in each of the molds. Rod once for every one square inch of surface area using a 3 8 inch rod. The molds being used are 3 inch wide and 11 inches long. Therefore, 33 rods are needed for each layer of this mold size. The number of rods needed is dependent on the specific mold size. Check yours before assuming. After rotting the first layer, make sure to work the concrete around the gauge studs using your fingers. Use a spade to trowel the inside edges of the mold. Then tap the sides with a mallet 10 to 15 times. Place the second lift slightly overfilling. Rod again 33 times across the surface area. Spade the edges and tap the sides with the mallet again 10 to 15 times. Finish to a flat level surface using a float without excessive manipulation. Once the surface is finished, clean off any excess concrete from the mold edges and sides. This will prevent chipping on the specimen edges when demolding.
and also reduce the amount of time spent cleaning the molds. Because we're not performing flexural or compressive loading, the length and the volume of these specimens are more important than the finish of the surface. Loosen the screws holding the gauge studs slightly to prevent restraint during initial curing. Wipe down one more time with a rag if needed. Immediately transport the specimens to the 100% humidity room and cover with plastic to prevent damage from dripping water. After 23 and a half plus or minus a half hour from mixing, remove the specimens from the 100% humidity room and demold. For each specimen, remove all of the exterior screws from one side. Tap the end plate off. Repeat for the opposite side. Tap along the edges of the mold to release the side plates from the specimen. High surface tension from the moisture could cause some difficulty in releasing the specimen. This usually means there was sufficient curing in the 100% room. Remove the inner end plates by tapping the corner edge to rotate around the gauge studs. After demolding, clean any debris and oil from the sides of the specimen. Label the specimen to correspond to the trial batch. For each set, there will be a specimen A, B, and C. You may use 1, 2, and 3 or other labeling system. Mark one side using an arrow or other indicator for consistent measurements in the same orientation. Complete the demolding process as quick as possible to limit drying of the specimen. Once labeled, take the specimens to the 50% humidity room and immediately submerge in lime saturated water. Condition specimens in the lime saturated water at 73 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 30 minutes. After the conditioning time and at an age of 24 plus or minus a half hour, take the specimens out of the lime saturated water and immediately measure the initial length. You may wipe dripping water away from the surface of the specimen, but maintain a moist condition while reading. Remove and measure one specimen at a time. We are using a digital length comparator, but dial versions also exist. Tear the comparator and set the specimens on the device using the gauge studs, maintaining the same reading orientation for all specimens. Gently spin the specimen to stabilize the comparator and record the length value for each specimen. Complete the readings as quickly as possible to limit drying of the specimens. Place the specimens back into the lime saturated water and cure for a total age of 28 days, removing the specimens only for length measurements. For every set of length measurements, measure the reference bar to track environmental changes in the curing room. Tear the comparator, place the bar into the device, spin gently, and record the length value. Also record the humidity and room temperature for every set as well. Make successive length measurements in the same manner at all required ages. ASTM C157 allows for two curing methods, either moist curing or air curing. When using the air storage method, place specimens on a drying rack at least one inch apart, maintaining open space above and below to allow complete air circulation. The drying rack should also be located in the 50% humidity room. The Colorado DOT CPL 4103 method, which is a hybrid model that blends the moist and air curing methods, is widely used throughout the industry in Colorado. For this method, after the initial comparator reading at 24 hours, store the specimens in lime saturated water for additional six days. Take a second comparator reading at a total specimen age of seven days using the procedure described earlier. Then place the specimens on a drying rack and store in air for a remainder of the curing. The final reading will be at a total specimen age of 35 days.
Length change is expressed as a percent of the initial specimen length. A positive number indicates expansion and a negative number indicates shrinkage. For a length change at any age, determine the difference between the comparator reading and reference bar reading at any age, as well as the initial difference. Subtract the initial difference value from the age difference value, then divide by the gauge length, then multiply by 100. The standard gauge length is 10 inches. It is not uncommon to see positive length changes during moist curing and negative length changes once specimens have been moved to air storage. Let's briefly go through an example of the shrinkage calculations. At each testing age, record the date, temperature, percent humidity, then measure the reference bar and length of each of the three specimens. At seven days as shown, we can calculate the length difference between each specimen and the reference bar, as well as the percent shrinkage or length change of the specimens. For each age, we also calculate the average percent shrinkage for the set of specimens. If you're a CRMCA member or have specific questions on this or any of the videos that I publish, please don't hesitate to contact me at the email shown. I hope this assists you in understanding this procedure and even gave you a few more tricks and knowledge behind the procedure. I've shared the links to our website, to ACI registrations in Colorado, and other links that might be helpful to you, including links to a few other groups that show the procedure properly.